Right. Namaskar and a very warm welcome to everyone joined in today on our 45th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. This talk is being organized by the Central Zoo Authority, New Delhi, as part of the ongoing Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav. The Mahotsav is a 75 week long celebration to commemorate 75 years of India's independence, which falls on the 15th of August 2022. The Central Zoo Authority is taking the celebration forward through a massive outreach campaign entitled Conservation to Coexistence, the People Connect. Under the helm of this campaign, we will be showcasing 75 conservation priority species and 75 zoos, highlighting one species and one zoo each week. We are currently in week 45 of this celebration with the pygmy hawk as a species in focus and the Assam State Kam Botanical Garden as a zoo in focus. So joined in today to speak to us on the species is Dr. Parag Deka. Dr. Parag is the, pro is the project director of the Pygmy Hawk Conservation Program and is also the pro program manager of the Threatened Species Recovery Program at Aryanak. Dr. Parag has over two, two decades of experience in the conservation and protection of pygmy hogs. His involvement with the Pygmy Hawk Conservation Program began in 1997 and he has since donned many caps to ensure the conservation of the species and sustenance of the program. He will speak to us today more on the XE2 conservation of the species in focus and its history. So over to you, sir. Uh, I think Dr. Uh, uh, DFO Guwahati Zoo want to introduce uh, me some, uh, tell something before my I start. Uh, Dr. Ashwini, would you like to add uh, something or can we begin? Please, Dr. Parag, you can go ahead. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm. Thank you. I'm sharing my presentation. All right. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Thank you uh, and welcome to the uh, wonderful uh, event of the 75 Azadika Mid Mahotsav uh, and along with that uh, the celebrations on the 75 species in India and this is the 45th week and thank you for selecting Pygmy Hawk uh, for this week and this is also 175 years of Pygmy Hawk. So today, uh, I'll tell a bit uh, how the pygmy hawk uh, pro conservation is going on. And uh, in 175 years ago, when the pygmy hawk was first uh, discovered by, in 1847, exactly for, uh, 175 years from now, uh, near uh, it was at that time it was called uh, Sikkim Tarai was very close to Baksa Tiger Reserve somewhere by a British ethnologist called B.H. Hodgson. He was working in that particular area looking for species, looking for people and looking for uh, even the language and the biodiversity of this area. He was also a Sanskrit Pandit. And one day a tribal uh, Sikaris bought him a species and he measured a species and he looked, uh, observed the species very detailed and he thought it's definitely a different kind of pig. So he named it Porcula. As the, uh, the Sikari was telling him that this was, he found close to a Sal of Bagan. So he, as he also a Sanskrit Pandit, so he named it Sal Vaniya from Sal Bagan. That was the beginning of Pygmy Hawk in the entire sub Himalayan region. So Pygmy Hog was found in the entire sub Himalayan region uh, once, but it was uh, thought to be extinct later. But uh, it gone to uh, the first display of Pygmy Hog in zoos. It was in London Zoo. In 1882, uh, Pygmy Hog was displayed uh, in the London Zoo. If you can see, uh, uh, they are, uh, they are, they are uh, brochures on the zoo, uh, uh, the drawing uh, drawing of the pygmy hog was on the cover page and it was written in 1883. Uh, so this is a pygmy hog drawing from at that time when they were, they were it were uh, displayed in the London Zoo. 
it was there for at least four years in London Zoo, and there was some bidding, uh, very unsuccessful bidding happened in the London Zoo at that time. At least I have record of four bidding uh, in London Zoo at that time. Then it was thought to be extinct, uh, but uh, in in 60s, but in 1971, uh, it was rediscovered by a, a person called uh, Jeremy uh, uh, John Teixeira Yandel. He he was from Jersey, and when he got posted in Assam in a tea garden, he went to Gerald Darrell and asked Gerald Darrell, "What can I do?" He said, "There, a, there was a species called pygmy hawk, which might be extinct, and you go and find it out." Then he organized his junior managers, and one of the his junior managers, name is Richard Grave. Uh, he found pygmy hawk in 1971. Well, it was selling in the market close to the Bornodi Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, when they put fire in the grass in the Bornodi, then it escaped through his tea garden called Africa Tea Garden. Then the few people from the tea garden labor are selling them in the market. So that's how he bought 12 pygmy hawk from that market and took it to the his uh, tea garden uh, bungalows. Uh, so those were kept in the bungalows at that time in 1971 and it was informed to Gerald Darrell immediately in 19 uh, and Gerald Darrell sent his deputy Jeremy Melinson to actually uh, find out the facts and Jeremy came and it uh, to Assam in 1971 and he confirmed it that yes it's pygmy hawk and he first write a scientific uh, uh, article in the Journal of Bombay Society in 1971. Uh, this pygmy hawk was in basically in two, three gardens at that time. What was Atari Khat Garden, then Paneri Tea State, uh, the Paneri Tea Garden. So it was there. And from there, the species was gone to uh, other zoos, particularly it's gone to Guwahati Zoo. And pygmy hog was in Guwahati Zoo between 1974 and 1979. It was displayed in Guwahati Zoo first time. And then one pair was sent to Zurich Zoo for uh, display and breeding. And thought uh, once, and the first uh, successful uh, breeding was uh, happening in the Zurich Zoo. There was a successful rearing of a litter. But before that, all the bird happened in the different zoos, like uh, in Guwahati Zoo and also in the tea garden. Those, those, those were not uh, very successful uh, bird. But Zurich Zoo could rear a litter successfully. But later on, uh, their female died and they could not continue the breeding population in, in Zurich Zoo. And after 79, there was no record of pygmy hog in any zoos uh, in, in anywhere else. Then in 1977, William Oliver, uh, a very young researcher from Jersey Zoo came to Assam. He tried to fire, uh, try to look in the different places in the entire Southern region and found pygmy hog in many places. And he wrote a first scientific monograph about pygmy hog. And, and try to include all the informations available at that time on about his biology, about his behavior, about his natural history, about his other informations also and distributions in that uh, monograph. 1978, Gerald Ryle himself came to Assam. He saw a pygmy hog in Guwahati Zoo and he tried to initiate a, a conservation effort for pygmy hog. Uh, but it was uh, it was not uh, done at that time. But between 1979 and between 1985, there was Assam movement going on in Assam. So it was really problem on many issues regarding also conservation of the, so the species. And after 1987, there was a Bodo movement in Assam. So during that movement, as you know, there was serious problem in the safety and security of not only the species, also our forest staff in working in Manas. Uh, so it was serious threat to not only to the mega herbivores or rhinos, it was also serious threat to the species like pygmy hawk. 
and then there was really a serious uh, issues on uh, uh, survival of the species like pygmy hawk uh, due to, because uh, pygmy hawk was found at the time only in Malas National Park, nowhere else in the world. So in 1995, in 1993, there was a small attempt of actually capture few pygmy hawk from Manas and they uh, in within the Manas National Park and closer was built and captured almost 30 pygmy hawk from Manas and put them there uh, just to create a safety net. But it was failed because when uh, food was offered to that enclosed uh, environment, uh, then elephant came to know about the availability of the food. They broke it, and the python came in, or tiger came in, or this, this entire population wiped out. So it was really failed. In 1993, Ayushian Action Plan was designed on wild pigs, and it was suggested that there should be a conservation breeding program or a kind of a captive breeding program at that time. It was called. Uh, to save the species from extinction. So it was suggested in that action plan. Uh, following the action plan in 1995, uh, government of Assam, Forest Department and Daryl Wildlife Conservation Trust with uh, together with uh, our uh, uh, central government forest department uh, and, and the wild pig specialist group uh, signed an agreement uh, to start a conservation uh, breeding program here in Assam. And with that, uh, uh, the animal six animals were brought to in captivity, and uh, it first uh, hogs was catched in Manas six animals, and it was led by Dr. Gautam Narayan and Dr. William Oliver uh, from uh, Doral side, and then there were many involved uh, from our state forest department side to start this uh, program in the year 1995 and in 1996 uh, six pygmy hawk uh, in the month of march six pygmy hawk brought to the captivity uh, that was the beginning of the entire journey of uh, conservation breeding and first uh, uh, population uh, first part happened in the uh, last day of uh, april and uh, in, in that particular year into 1996 uh, three liters are born. Three of them were actually pregnant from the wild. And since then, uh, 198 liter born in captivity with 721 birds and 476 of them are reared. Uh, uh, reared uh, and then we maintain 80 individuals in captivity. Now we have 82 individuals in captivity between the both the centers. We have one center here in uh, Guwahati in Basista and another center that is called pre-release center that is in the uh, near Namari National Park. So that's how we started our journey. I'm not going to tell you detail about how we breed them and how we uh, uh, release, uh, how we do the release procedures, but our journey started in 1996, uh, got a six big hawk from Manas. Uh, later on, um, one more join and one rescue animal join in the as a founder populations, and then three more animal join in 2013 uh, to improve the genetic uh, diversities of the health of the uh, captive animals. In 2006, we took pygmy hawk to our pre-release center at Nameri, and from 2008, we have started our reintroductions program. We start uh, first release in the Sonai Rupai, then Orang, then Borodi, and now recently we are, we are releasing Pygmy Hawk in, in Manas National Park. So, so far, 142 Pygmy Hawk has been released, and out of that, the population reintroduced uh, in Orang is doing very well. And we have recently, we are following the population in reintroduced population in. Uh, Manas National Park. Hope we will be able to establish the population in also in the Manas. Uh, in uh, then, uh, but these centers are not allowed for uh, public to uh, visit and then see the pygmy hawk. So we have uh, working with the Central Zoo Authority for long, and then in 
with the help of uh, funding support from Central Zoo Authority. In 2004, we have uh, built a, a center in Guwahati Zoo. And then in 2000, uh, sorry, 2014, in 2014, we moved uh, uh, Pygmy Hawk for a public display in Guwahati uh, Zoo. And since then, uh, uh, Pygmy Hog is being displayed in Guwahati Zoo. So this uh, help us to uh, tell the people uh, about the Pygmy Hog because it's very rare animal to see. It's, it's not only the local students or the public, also people coming from abroad. Uh, uh, they, if they want to see Pygmy Hog, they can really go to Guwahati Zoo and they can see uh, the Pygmy Hog there. So it was uh, a great role played by the Guwahati Zoo on the uh, on displaying the pygmy hog and telling the people uh, or or really awaiting the people about this rare uh, rare species found only in assam at, at this moment uh, after all this conservation efforts for so many years like 25 years uh, pygmy hog is one of the species recognized by the world authorities that out of the 48 species saving from the extinction by conservation efforts, one of them is pygmy hawk. So this is a, a real recent publications in last year. Uh, they did a very critical analysis of all the species uh, working, uh, uh, people working on the conservation. And out of that, they recognized that this uh, conservation effort uh, uh, really saved this pygmy hawk uh, from extinction. So this is uh, this pygmy hawk uh, conservation program is not only for conserving the species uh, pygmy hawk, but it also works towards the uh, conservation of biodiversity in the tall grassland. It, it includes pygmy hawk and habitat Bengal florica and, and hawk deer uh, and other other um, species found in the tall grassland. Uh, hope uh, this species is also can lead uh, not only future for one species but future for all species. So uh, I would like to thank you for Central Zoo Authority uh, choosing this pygmy hawk as uh, one of the species for these auspicious occasions of 75 years of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsap. And thanks to all partner and thanks to the all supporter those who continually support this project for a long. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the detailed uh, presentation on the history of the ex situ conservation efforts undertaken for the species in focus. We now move on to the talk on the zoo. So we have with us Dr. Ashwini Kumar, who is the Divisional Forest Officer and the officer in charge of the Assam State Zoo Cum Botanical Garden. So Dr. Ashwini is a veterinarian by training and is an, also an Indian Forest Service Officer of the 2017 batch from the Assam Meghalaya Gadda. He will speak to us today briefly on the zoo in focus. So over to you, sir. Sir, you need to unmute yourself. Yes, it's uh, you're audible now. Okay, fine. Uh, thanks, Sarandati. And thank you all who are here. Uh, to give me this opportunity to tell you about the uh, Assam State Zoo. Uh, I don't have any presentation right now, so sorry for that. But uh, about Assam State Zoo, I want to tell that. Uh, it is situated in the heart of the Guwahati city, uh, within the Hangabai Reserve Forest area. Uh, the establishment of uh, this Assam State Zoo is a very different uh, historical aspect was there. That uh, in 1957, there was a meeting of Indian National Congress. And uh, for the purpose of entertainment of uh, the leaders, uh, some animals, uh, endemic animals were brought in there in the form of a menagerie. And later, uh, they don't found any other place to, to release those animals. So, those animals become the first uh, captives of this Assam State Zoo. And in 1958, 
some 130 hectare uh, 130 hectare area of this uh, Hyderabad reserve forest has been demarcated as Assam State Zoo and open for the public. And uh, right now, after 130, some other additions and additions happened, and now we have an area of 175 uh, hectares. Uh, as uh, the location is in the Hangabai Reserve Forest, so it is a hilly area within the Guwahati city. So the topography or the landscape of this zoo is uh, not too very plain or straight. It is uh, completely undulating. And uh, almost 70% of the area is covered with the forest, virgin forest area. Uh, more about the zoo, uh, so right now we are having around 117 species of different uh, animals. Out of them, uh, 38 species of mammals are there, 49 species of birds are there, and 30 species of reptiles are there. And uh, out of uh, these 117 species, 52 of them are scheduled one or two species. Uh, it is one of the largest zoo in the northeast area and uh, one among the 14 large zoo of India. Uh, so, <clears throat> apart from this, uh, I would like to add that uh, we are also doing some conservation breeding program for the one horned rhinoceros, uh, sea, Himalayan zero, and golden langur. And uh, we are getting good results also. Uh, in the first week of this uh, January, also, we got a baby of uh, golden langur. So that has, uh, we are doing good in that uh, aspect. Apart from this, uh, <clears throat> if uh, I'm telling you about this uh, Assam State Zoo from Botanical Garden, it is a botanical garden also, and uh, we are having around uh, 345 indigenous and 280 approximately exotic plant species. The vegetation here is the tropical moist deciduous in the semi evergreen forest, we have the bamboo patches also and some tea plantation inside the zoo. So, this is uh, more or less about Assam State Zoo. If you have any other query about it, okay, please. Right, thank you so much, sir, for that. Despite your ill health, you've been able to give a brief overview of the zoo as such. Uh, so with this, we'll move on to the question answer session for today. So we we'll first take up questions for the species. So Dr. Farag, are you there with us? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Uh, so Dr. Farag, the first um, question for you is that uh, what is the most pressing need and challenge for an actionable conservation model for the species? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for the nice question, actually. <laughs> See, the pygmy hog, we consider pygmy hog is a indicator species for the health of the grassland. And it is kind of a barometer. If the habitat start degrading, then the pygmy hog will disappear first. It is a very sensitive species. Uh, it's not only the habitat, also it disturbances. Okay. And so, uh, and this grass cell also supports not only pygmy hog, but many other species of the sub Himalayan region. If you go to Bengal, a species called Bengal Florican, and even the hog deer and his pig hair, other species. So if we can really conserve a species like pygmy hog, it means we are conserving its home. I mean, it's con we're conserving the grassland properly. So most crucial of saving the species actually to save the grassland, it means we are not saving the only the grassland, only the pygmy hawk, but saving the other very needy species like uh, Bengal forica and his speed hair and even hawk deer. If we are able to really save grassland and pygmy hawk, and I think we will save other species also. Right. So the next question for you is that other than habitat loss, are there any other and are there any other threats that the species faces? Uh, at this moment, uh, we consider habitat degradation is the primary loss, primary threat, but new threats are coming up. As you know, very recently, a disease called African swine fever, uh, it reached Assam from China, and it was spreading everywhere. 
and in there is no treatment or no vaccinations and nothing available against the disease in and disease can be a, a driver for extinction of a species so we will be very careful while we managing the population in captivity and also is managing the population in the wild i think disease can be a, another threat at this moment right sir and so the next question for you is that um so you spoke about re reintroducing the species in the wild after, you know, in terms of the soft release thing. Were there any community oriented activities that were carried out uh, prior to the first wild release of the species? Uh, uh, not in the first wild release. I mean, the, when we release, start releasing in the uh, introdu reintroduction in the Bornodi or in Sunairupai, it was very inside. There was not uh, no direct, no direct community uh, involved in that particular areas uh, but uh, now we are working in closely in the Manas Tessel Park and Manas there is no buffer there is just community and the park boundary so there is also you know between 1987 and then 2003 almost there was socio-political unrest and there was uh, uh, there was a poor kind of a, a, a protection measures because of this uh, issues and then our staff was uh, suffered a lot uh, during that arm move movement. So there was a pressure on the grassland uh, because people at that time goes at any time to put fire or there was some other issues like uh, extraction of uh, forest resources. So it created disturbances. Now those are less uh, because of normal situations and the protection is very good at this moment. But still, we need to work with the community to really make them understand the value of the grassland for their survival. How, because our sub Himalayan region is in a very fragile ecosystem, and where grassland is act as a cushion against this fragile ecosystem. So, grassland is very important for I mean, the livelihood of the community because it absorbs uh, high rainfall and it releases the uh, water gradually, so make the table uh, water table high and good for uh, cultivation. So if we try, if we really consider community on board, then they really need to understand the value of the grassland for their uh, survival against this fragile ecosystem. So that's why we have taken up uh, work uh, work with the community. We are now working with the uh, eco development committees, which is a part of the government. Uh, of the park and to try to convince or try to work with the community to reduce the anthropogenic pressure on the grassland. Right, sir. And sir, uh, the last question for you is that um, that how is this species different from the other species that are there in like in the same family in terms of the other things? Okay. Is there anything uh, apart from apart from apart from size? Is there any other? Uh, Difference in the species biology as such that you can, you know, elucidate on. Yes, if uh, in morphologically uh, in wild boar they have five pairs of mema and these uh, pygmy hog they have three pairs of mema. Their tail is very short, like tail is less than an inch kind of. Uh, and other wild boar or other species they have longer tails, and we call them a bullet sepet. And these are the physical uh, morphological differences. But one of the primary difference with the other and very interesting difference, pygmy hawk, they build their own home. This is very interesting thing. No mammals built uh, like a proper home all I live on that home for throughout the, their life. But pygmy hawk need a house. What they do, they live very inside the grassland. They cut the grass and they organize the grass in such a way it and make a nest and live inside the nest. When there is too hot, they go inside the nest. When there is rain, they go in the nest. And every evening, they go inside the nest. So this very interesting uh, thing we observe in, in big, 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 big hawk. Is we don't we have not seen similar thing in any other mammals uh, living on the ground, making a, a diff, typical uh, typical home for them and live on the uh, live on, on the home. So I think this is very interesting thing about the big, big hawk about the biology and they eat lots of roots and tubers and insects and things. 
All right, so, and so we've just got one last question for you that says that, uh, so do these, uh, do this, does the species exhibit territoriality? Like do they, are they territorial animals as such or do they, you know, yes, and it, particularly male. Male, uh, it uh, remains in isolations, uh, but male join the female uh, during the breeding season, and uh, and and particularly two male, if two male, if come close to each other during the breeding season, and they will be really uh, fighting with each other. So they have some territorial demarcations between the males, adult males. All right, sir. So um, those were the questions for you. We now move on to questions for the zoo. So, Dr. Ashwini, uh, the first question for you, are you there with us? Dr. Ashwini, can you hear me? Um, oh. Yes, okay. All right, uh, sir. So the question for you is that, uh, so the the species in focus is specifically like it's housed in your you are you are the only zoo in the country that is housing the species. So uh, what steps does the zoo take to help with the display and the breeding of pygmy hog? If you can just uh, elaborate on that. Yes, uh, we are having a very good veterinary team of veterinary officers here. Uh, they are directly in contact with the Dr. Parag Deka who is the project coordinator for this. So when we devise the feeding schedule and the habitat management inside the zoo, then we always uh, keep it in mind that it should be as per the requirement of this particular species, it means uh, it should have the proper hiding place also, proper grass land area inside the its uh, habitat the disturbance should be minimum from the visitors and from the other people because it's a very fragile species also. So sometimes uh, it may happen that it will need some, uh, uh, means uh, it will decrease the breeding potential if we continuously uh, do the, uh, means uh, biotic pressure is more if I can directly say this. If the people's pressure will be more, and the breeding pressure breeding will be low. And uh, the next thing is about the diet and the communicable diseases. As Dr. Prajwati Deka has already told us that uh, African swine fever is there in the field and it is a real threat for this species. So <clears throat> we try to maintain as much possible as biosecurity measures inside the zoo. For all the species, not for only the pygmy hog, for all the species. Right, sir. And can sir, I, one last. Yes. Sorry, can I add one, one more, one more? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Please go so ahead. When we when we started this uh, display in the uh, Guwahati Zoo, what we did, uh, one of the keeper, uh, actually Guwahati Zoo Authority posted one of the uh, their keeper in our center for two months. So we trained the keeper with the entire process of. Uh, uh, management of the enclosures, feeding, handling, and captures kind of thing. And then also when we send the uh, zoo to Guwahati Zoo, then we send one of our keeper to work there for about a week. So there was an exchange of information, technologies, and techniques so that uh, zookeeper is really, really expert now. And then we infer the, both the veterinarians of that uh, Guwahati Zoo and we exchange the information about our entire disease and what are the medications we need to give and what sort of things. We had the, from the beginning, we exchange information. So there was a real communication between uh, them and us. So there was no, uh, so easy for uh, if there is any issues. So they, they're following the all protocols necessary for managing the pygmy hog in captivity. We pl they planted grasses, we, plant, we provide the grass necessary for pygmy hog. And the design was made such a way that when the, the enclosure was designed, they took uh, help of our expertise. Uh, so we provide the expertise for designing the enclosure also. And after the arrival of the African swine fever, actually we hold a meeting in Guwahati Zoo and then design a protocol for zoo and our center and also all the parks in Assam with the leadership of our chief wildlife board and we organized that meeting in in the, last, in the 2020 may and now everybody is following that 
Yeah. All right, so uh, thank you for adding on to that. And uh, Dr. Ashwini, one last question for you is that, uh, so how is the, uh, like what, in terms of conservation education, how are visitors, uh, how are visitor interactions guided towards this objective? Like, is there, is there any specific program or anything that you do in the zoo? Uh, Ma'am, we regularly organize uh, some of the programs for the school students to tell them about the conservation and all. Uh, apart from that, uh, along with this uh, uh, TSA, also we are doing some programs. Okay. Uh, uh, except uh, these two things, uh, the regular visits of the zoo and the regular uh, this uh, poster making competitions and this. We regularly organize during our various programs, like uh, you can say during the wildlife week and all. So that uh, we continuously means uh, there is a regular week, at least uh, once in a two months, we do some outreach activity with the local people. So that helps, I think. He, to make the people understand about the conservation and the concept of zoo. Right, sir. So I think uh, those were the questions for you. And with that, we come to the end to our 45th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. So on behalf of the Central Zoo Authority, I would like to thank all the speakers, Dr. Parag and Dr. Ashwini, for taking time out of the schedule and joining us for this uh, for this talk, despite your ill health. I would also like to thank the audience for being with us throughout and would also like to inform them that uh, we will be back next week with our week 46 species, which is the northern pigtail macaque and the zoo in focus is the Aizwa Zoo. So do tune in to that talk next Wednesday from 4 to 5 p.m. And Assam State Zoo is continuing their outreach activities till the end of this week, which is on Sunday. So do tune into the social media pages to know more on what are the activities. And in. So once again, on behalf of everybody, thank you so much and Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you for thank you for giving us opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.